Hi, welcome to Happy Hour with Ruth and Roxy. We're here, we're, we're rolling, here. and we almost know what we're doing. Yep. So hey. And we have whiskey today. We have whiskey. We have my cheers. cheers. It's it's called a blueberry smash. I think it's supposed to be made with gin, but we this week we prefer whiskey. She gets to do whatever she wants on podcast day. With whiskey. So my birthday's coming up, and Woo-hoo! last year, they got me this fantastic little birthday gift of oh yeah a drink thing and and it was called the seasoned writer. This was in it, so this is called Johnny Johnny Walk- Handsome Johnny Handsome, and it's it's whiskey as part of a whole gift pack. For it had like making. a whole drink, and it was a drink yeah. called the seasoned writer I've that was the, specifically I, yeah. It's upstairs on my desk. See, Dang, why didn't okay. I bring it down? We'll put it. Me? We'll take a picture we'll take and a put picture it in the it. thing. Yeah, but it comes from a a, a, a local. Um, Distillery, yeah, it's called Roots and Wings in Langley, and it is fabulous. They, these are the most amazing people. They grow the things on their farm. Out. She's hey, oh, she's going go to deal dogs, but they hey. grow the stuff on the farm. They have a great little spot where you can go do tastings, and they sell all really cool little things. They, you know, and if you ask, they will set you up with specialty cocktail boxes, which is re- which is a really cool thing. So, this week's a whiskey week. We decided to go local because at this time, it's kind of important to support local, right? We want to make sure that we're taking care of the people in the, in the kind of the radius of where we live because let, the, let all the national stuff go on, you guys. Let's just look around our communities because if we each do that, life will be better, right? Totally. Right. Yeah. I might be up and down a little bit, still puppy training. Yes. He's doing great, but um, you know, he ate and you know what happens after eating? It's called the gastrocolic reflex. Did you know that? Learn something new. Something goes in on this side, it comes out the all the way down there. Yeah. So anyway, but I have to say, depending on what food I have, it doesn't always happen (laughs) for me. But that might be an age thing. (laughs) Just saying. Well, it doesn't happen as immediately. This guy is pretty reliable. He eats, he poops. That is there it goes. But now he's doing something over there. I don't know. So so we're gonna talk. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. We probably have less stuff on our list than we usually do because it's been a a week. Did you hear that? But I guarantee (laughs) we got a little bit of um, there's joy behind us. Comic relief going on here. Yep. Yep. But there's only two today, so it will pass. Yes, it will pass. Nope. Look at there's fun behind us. It's an easy distraction. That's right. (sighs) It's okay. It's all about love, right? It is all. Look at the joy. And there's my little love thing. Yeah. You can hardly see it up there. What little love thing? My little sign on my Oh, yeah, face. you can see it yeah. in script. Yeah. You'll, you'll also see Luna showing not love because she puts up with so much, and then she's like, I am going to hand you your ass. In my oh, so Luna is the fun police. So oh, when boy, all of our dogs ever. fight, when we go on walks and stuff together, they all get a bit crazy, and Luna's like, not you, <laughs> not you. No, no. No, no, no. So, she gets in so, there. So, oh, my goodness, hey, now there's a okay. pillow. Okay. It's a pillow with feathers in it. Okay. What we're going to see is a lot of Roxanne running around. Hello, Luna. Do you want me yeah. to save you? Yeah, you will. But yes. Um, I'm also going to say, my dog is teething. So any parents out there that remember teething, it's really funny because he was sitting on my lap last night. And when he sits on his lap, he's just like teenage boy, okay? He lies this way. Junk is like wide open to the world. Ah, mouth is wide open like he wants to just drop something Is he in sleeping? It. Sometimes, sometimes he's just lying there like, hey, look at me. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm looking at his teeth because I can't wait for the baby teeth to be gone. And one of them is like, rrr, rrr, rrr. so Ray grabbed it and he's just like, yoink. Let <laughs> oh, me tell you something about this family though. And the dog didn't care. So, so clearly they like pulling teeth. So be careful if you come here and you sleep over, <laughs> just saying, and you sleep with your mouth open like I exactly. might. But, but you know what else <laughs> they like to do? Pull teeth. They like don't to, want to be pulled. What do you like to do, Roxanne? Oh, we like to poke things. They like to pop. We like to pop. Okay, so boils. poodles sometimes have a tendency to be a little bit, um, I want to say warty, but that's not really quite the right word. Doesn't doesn't quite denote the elegance of the breed that I'm trying to convey, but at any rate, Luna's got little things, and so Ray will be sitting with her on his lap watching TV, and I see him, and he's just like, like, don't pick at it. Don't pick at it. If you want to pick at that, you take her in, you sedate her, you do all this stuff, and you do it properly. You do not just pick at her until like gets all angry because then that's what happens but he can't resist it gets angry i love that that (laughs) phrase but it so last last christmas i think it was oh yeah and i'm sure we've told you guys this before but i gave roxanne a thing and it's a thing that it's got rubber in it so it's kind of like pimply so you can pick it right so it's her like it's your fidget pimple toy yeah 
I these love people it. Are so it's weird. awesome. So weird. It's an occupational habit. Let's, yeah. let's talk about how we've all felt this week. It's been kind of, I mean, despair is a good word for it, right? So Brene Brown says, despair is a claustrophobic feeling. It's the emotion that says nothing will ever change. It's different than anger or sadness or grief. Despair is twinged with hopelessness. People who subscribe, subscribe to power over leadership often weaponize despair. They count on people giving up on themselves, on their work, and each other. I get it. I'm looking at people I know with suspicion. I'm questioning the value of my work. I'm wondering if courage, kindness, and caring for each other simply doesn't matter anymore. I'm desperate for someone to blame because blame is an effective way to discharge pain and it gives us a sense of counterfeit control. The research shows that hope is a powerful antidote to despair. What's interesting, however, is that hope is not an emotion, and she, she cites whoever decided that. Hope is a cognitive behavioral process. It's about having a goal, a pathway to achieve that goal, and a sense of agency, or I can do this. Right now, the thing that's helping the most is microdosing hope. I have no access to big hope right now. However, I am asking myself how I can support the people around me, the people on my team, in my community. How can I make sure that in the maelstrom of my emotions, I stay committed to courage, kindness, and caring for others, regardless of the choices made by others? Doing the smallest next right thing is hard. She says AF, but it's as fuck, because it is hard as fuck. But sometimes it's all we've got. And I think that's a good... We're going to talk about joy and hope today, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's all we've got. And, yeah. and, and we need to hold on to that, because, you know... It's, it's hard right now, but the fact is, we're not going to despair. We're not going to give them the power over us, right? I think it was, I think it's Emily Dickinson that said, hope is the thing with feathers, right? And, and it's from a bigger poem, obviously, and it's a beautiful, beautiful line. And I love that. Yeah. And so like, even just little things like finding some poetry that feeds your soul. Yeah. So one of my favorite books, <clears throat> what is the title of it, Ruth? Oh God, hang on. I've not had a good this. week. She, I can't okay, do this. Who can do it? Who hang on. It? Hang on. The blah blah blah. <laughs> it's about South Africa. It is a it, it's about it's about Damn it. Congo, yeah. Say one word. Oh Congo. The. No. <laughs> the don't Bible. tell me. It's oh, oh the, the poison wood Bible. That's it. Whew. So Whew. one of the characters in that book is um she's got a very interesting she's neurodivergent, but she's neurodivergent because of a birth defect. She was born with hemiplegia. So she does not have, she's only got half a brain. Right. So she functions differently. And it's a really interesting how they show her over the course of the book. But anyway, when she's a younger person, she's fascinated with poetry. She's fascinated with um, uh, expression of things in a very different way. So she will write backwards. Oh, that's going to be fun. Um, she will write backwards in her journal so that only she can read oh. it. And then she'll say things backwards, like backwards and forwards. So think about as an author, how you create a character that does something oh like that. Oh my gosh. Like so, but she's also, and she calls her no snickety lime. That's backwards Emily Dickinson. Oh, that's So funny. she talks about no snickety lime and she does, she, like I know more poetry from, from the Barbara Bible, Kingsolver right, right, right. about Emily Dickinson right. than oh, I would have otherwise. So anyway, that uh, again, that book, that book will bring you hope. That's good. And there's a lot of stuff in there. Yep. Nope. And and you know, and we've talked about this because we talk about doing the th the thing that scares you. But I also mm. think that the um, my year with Eleanor mm -hmm. is another good book that that's yeah. full of hope. But but let and and a. I, I'm going to have to figure out what my name is backwards, but no snickety lime. is like the coolest name I know, ever. I know. It's right. Perfect. Like I I'm, want that name. I, I'm an axer coupons. It's awful. <laughs> I can't even say mine. Ray, Ray is yarkapons. Like it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. There's another one I have and, and I will, it says it, it's from at crow's fault. So I don't know who that, but I found this online and it says people speak of hope as if it's this delicate, ephra, ephra, how do you say this? Ephemeral. Ephemeral. Ephemeral thing. Okay. People, people speak of hope as, as if it's this delicate, ephemeral thing made of whispers and, spiders webs, and spider webs. It's not. Hope has dirt on her face, blood on her knuckles, the grit of the cobblestones in her hair, and just spat out a tooth as she rises for another go. I got to tell you, I'm going to put this up and I'm going to carry one in my wallet to remind me because... I feel like I'm rising for another go. Mm. And we will all feel that way at different times. 
but this is we're not we're not sitting back and being like oh the women have been silent who is that from it says crow's fault so i'm going to look oh, i'm going to yeah. google and get more but yeah, that, I, I just that. found it online well and i love so to so to connect that to no snickety limes hope is the thing with feathers you think about birds and what they go through nope. to survive and to escape and all that like a feather seems like a really delicate thing but in but fact it's, it's tremendously powerful yeah. well that's just it i mean very, they very fly light. Yeah. Right? They yeah. they use it to keep themselves warm. Yeah. And and also like I mean, when anybody says birds, I think of, of crows or ravens because mm. I don't because I'm Because you're dark. Because I am dark. But also also think about think about all the things. They They're so they, smart. And they are and they and they, they, like shiny and they know who to hate. Like you. But they also exactly <laughs> see but but and they bring you shiny things. I mm-hmm. want I want I want to make friends with a crow. I think it would drive Scruffy crazy. It but would. also think about crows, they're smart. They pick their enemies wisely. Mm-hmm. If you if you're kind to them, they take care of you. And if you're not, so there was there was a story, and I'm trying to remember what neighborhood it was, but it was in a group I was in, and it was this person, and it was like, I don't know what to do, because these crows that I feed and stuff, and they love me, and they bring me things all the time, have decided they have to protect me. So when she leaves the house, if there's a person walking down the street, the crows all go at the people, <laughs> right? And so she was like, my neighbors are going to want me to move, because like oh these crows goodness. are really protective, right? Wow. And so and so then she, what she did was she got all her neighbors to start feeding them. Yeah. So it, they became, but then, if a stranger comes on the street, but at least <laughs> your neighbors aren't mad at her right delivery people must just love oh yeah that. can you imagine but what a fun thing though like i wouldn't have thought of that we had in our other house we had a neighbor who was feeding um the the stellar jays that we have around here all the time right and they're really pretty but man they're like they are they're, we call them stressy jays in our house they're the noise that they make is really hard to listen to and it wrinkles dogs it it does it they're really fun to watch though and so oh, i ended beautiful. up watching them a lot but this neighbor Oh, this neighbor had, oh, it wasn't his, was, he was maybe feeding a few things because he was definitely feeding uh, a squirrel. So he would have the squirrel that would come up and take a nut. He would have, yeah. you know, peanuts in the shell and he would take the peanut. I watched him do this one time because I was trying to figure out what is wrong with our eaves. Why are our eaves <gasps> full, full of, peanut of peanuts all the time? <laughs> So he's over there, like across the driveway, across the yard, in his own house, feeding the squirrel a peanut. The, pe- the squirrel is like, ha, 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 He takes the peanut, runs across the driveway, the yard, up our house, all the way to the far end. And has disappears, a party. Disappears into the eaves. Yeah, and he has a party. And then he invites his friends. And they're running through. Okay, I'm... <laughs> This was a whole thing when we were moving. And we listed our house off and on for a few years before we actually decided to move. And... Every now and then, my husband would come home from work, and I'm like, fucking squirrel. They're in the house again. And he's like, what is wrong with you? You are hallucinating. Um, Because I only hear it when I'm at work in my room in that corner of the house, right right up against the eaves, and I hear them. I'm like, nope, I'm not hallucinating. I will lose my mind in here, though. I took video. I have. And (laughs) finally, finally, somebody went up, and they're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Were they in your walls? They weren't in our walls. They were only in the, um, they hadn't penetrated uh, through the eave part into the house part. Right. But they were but they absolutely were in that running the, perimeter, area, right. the perimeter of the roof constantly. And they right. had chewed up a bunch of wires and they had, yeah. they had made a mess in there. Oh, yeah. But yeah. we had stucco. Last time I'll have stucco in a house because they were just like, <laughs> oh, the, the guy comes come. up and he's like, oh, stucco. Yeah, we call that mouse ladder. Any rodent can just can climb get it up, up it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, no, but that, but it is, but it is like when you watch them and you watch the birds and they make, then they make our dogs crazy. But we used to have where we used to live because it was a fence backyard. So the dogs would go out and our older dog, Sassy, and she was like, we think maybe a coyote cross. We don't know that a hundred percent, but she sure had coyote and she definitely was a prey driven. Like they had this chipmunk that I swear to God was so smart and it wouldn't show up until Sassy was in the yard. No. (laughs) And then it came in, it chattered over her and drove her insane. (laughs) Oh, okay, that's funny. That's that's an interspecies love story. Oh yeah, or of some sort, or, or something, or you know maybe they were married in another life and they yeah. broke up. Yeah, but it was like this chipmunk, like it would just go along doing it. You'd see it once in a while going back and forth. As soon as Sassy's out, it's on its fence post, going like <laughs> honestly, mostly going like fuck you. <laughs> They know how to tease. They do, and they know that they can escape, right? Which, which I got to say, kind of makes me happy because I wouldn't know what to do if they got one. Oh but, yeah. But it's like we walk our dogs here, and Scruffy is a terrier, so he definitely has a prey drive, oh, and yeah. we have rabbits, 
And most of the rabbits here, I mean, except for we have eagles and, and hawks and stuff, but most of the rabbits here aren't that, like there's the new babies are usually quicker to move away, but yeah. the older ones don't. And Scruffy is fast. If he ever got off the leash, he'd catch it, right? And, but it's like they know he's on a leash. It's, you, you think, I don't know, I don't know. Prey They're not afraid of not, him, though. A lot, yeah. Like the, I, rabbits, like the rabbits from here, like to, I don't know, to where your table is, which is like three feet, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And the rabbit's like eating grass and... Or are they just stupid? I don't. Are they stupid, or is 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 immobility and camouflage their biggest their their biggest advantage? But the right? others, some run though. Some run, yeah, because that's there's... smarter. And they zigzag well, when they run. They so for sure do. That's yeah. what you're supposed to do if somebody's shooting at you. Just saying. <laughs> Yes, I'll keep that in mind next yeah. time. I don't know. That must be from some war movie. Because how would I know that? Did I tell you about when my my poodle Mishkin killed a squirrel? No. Oh. It was entirely accidental, and it was it was awful and funny at the same time because he was a total retriever. He would chase anything, no. and so I had him up on the. We lived on a uh, sort of a. We backed onto green space, so we didn't have any development behind us, and I was up there all the time, digging, working off my stress, and trying to trying yeah. to civilize the area a little bit and so he was with me so i would be digging weeds and i'd toss them and he'd chase them and shake them and bring them back and it was all fun and uh and then one day he this squirrel is and i don't even know how it happened all i know is i saw it it was one of those slow motion things it's a squirrel he's going after it he thinks it's a clod of weeds it's not oh, he's no. gonna get it he's gonna shake it and he he shook it killed it obviously yeah and then he looked at me like what just happened what <laughs> What? What? And he came back like, uh, make it, make it, fix it, mommy, fix it. My toy is dead. Fix it. Oh, so weird. weird. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was an odd moment. Yeah. But yeah, Scruffy would be the same. He he would probably he, get there and then put it. on the brakes. Well, but that's just it. It would be. Although he did before we got him when he was with his the, the foster people. Um, I guess he got out one day and he got a rat. Right. Oh. So then he had to get antibiotics yeah. and a bunch of stuff and yeah. things. And they were like, he was, and they had a fence backyard and they were like, he was just going down to do his business. And all of a sudden they saw a rat move and Scruffy saw it at the same time. And they were like, he, he, cause he's fast. He's fast. Right. Oh, yeah. But, but it is, but we had when, when I lived, I lived on a float home when I first moved to Vancouver and I had this dog named Jackson who was, I don't know, he was big. Like he was probably 80 pounds and he was some kind of, lab retriever some kind of you know that kind of cross mm -hmm. but he was definitely mm -hmm. like there were a lot of mixed breeds like yeah. I couldn't tell yeah. you he was just big but he always wanted and we had geese and swans on the dock right when we were when we we're there and so at one point there's this goose and and all the kids on the dock called me mother goose which kind of pissed me off because the goose loved <laughs> they, me oh okay right okay. and so her name was Gwendolyn <clears throat> although we're not sure it was really a girl but but we called her Gwendolyn because I don't know Gwendolyn the goose just seemed to work been. It could have been Greg. Greg. We don't know. But we're out there, and, and Gwendolyn used to, because I would leave Jackson at home, of course, and go to work. And I had a dog walker, or even on the dock, to go take it, because you didn't have a fence. Like, you didn't, couldn't you're just on let a, him you're out. On a right? You're on a float home. But anyway, I would go out, and Gwendolyn would swim with me until she couldn't swim with me anymore. She'd hop up, and she'd follow me up to my car. Oh. Right? And then when I would come home, Gwendolyn would be sitting at the end of the, like the, at, at the end of the ramp to get on the dock, and then she'd follow me home. Oh. Well, Jackson, of course, didn't like that, because we'd go to walk the dog, and Gwendolyn was like, who the hell's that? <laughs> right? And that happened every night. And then one time, Jackson got away from me, and he got Gwendolyn up against the, the back of the fence on the other side of the dock. And Gwendolyn went at him so bad, he fell in between my oh. float home and the dog. Oh no! So I had to fish out an eighty-pound dog <laughs> while pushing Gwendolyn away, and and it was like honestly. So and then all the kids were like, "Oh, Mother Goose, Gwendolyn's mad," and it's like, "Fuck you." Okay, geese are not. You do not. That is not an adversary to take lightly. No. So we live. But she loved me, just saying. Okay, not sassy though, and Jackson. Not Jackson. Sorry, no, she did not like him. Oh. Okay, so... Oh, we, yeah, it wasn't a Canada goose. It was a white goose. It was a Does white that make goose. a difference? Because well, Canada I geese, know. I know, are nasty. Well, okay, so we grew... I had... We moved around a bit when I was a kid. So for two years, we lived on what I call the first farm. And we had geese on that farm. And that's the farm like we lived on. Like white geese or Canadian geese? White geese. Okay. Um, Canada geese, actually, is what they're called. Come on, be Canadian and say it right. Canada geese. Canada geese. 
Oh, okay, here's my wordsmith friend. Say it right. <laughs> Say it right. Um, so we had these, ge- we had all sorts of poultry, I guess, but my brother was born on that farm. So he would have, in my memory, he's toddling around. So he would have been about a year and a half. That sounds about right. And of course, I was like eight, nine, and my sister was seven, and we thought it was great to torture him. Poor poor child so so we're running around outside and the geese are doing their thing you know i'm just gonna start to gra- take notes range. for the show because <laughs> they're grazers right. they kind of you know get around so but if my brother was out they would go after him they go after his diaper and they would grab him in the in the diaper and oh, no, 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 no. and the poor kid was terrified oh, and they're no like, kidding and they're and they're tall big. as him like he was just little at the time he's a big he's no. a big man now but they were way taller than him, and they were mean, and it was so friggin' funny. And so mean. I think we rescued him. We rescued him. I'm going to say that. That's how. Well, he's that's still alive. He's so still maybe alive. They did. Well, you know, I don't think a goose, goose could kill you, but it could sure scare you. And so, did we rescue him from the from the mental and emotional trauma? No, we inflicted more, probably. But that's the role of bigger sisters. Oh, so I guess. do that mean face again. It's good. So I just reminded myself of my my granddaughter who has, she has a face that is, when she gets excited about anything, she grits her teeth. <laughs> I'm like, where does that come from? That, that Where could that, where does that demon where, energy oh come goodness. from? I don't oh know. My. I don't know. Oh my. Well, so I have two more things to add to Goose Story. So, so when we had Gwendolyn, so I was on the float home first by myself, and then and then Paul and I got together, and then he started spending more time there, and then he moved in there because you know I wasn't leaving my float home, but you were feeding him. But see, you fed him, and he stayed. And he stayed. It's like it's like the gremlins that grow overnight <laughs> or something. But at one point, so I'm like, because Gwendolyn would come, right? And Gwendolyn would come, and I used to throw her um, unsalted peanuts, All and right. she would catch them. Right, and I don't know. We got to. Some, I wish I could find like my my journals from back then because I got to some crazy number like in the twenties that she caught in a row. I'm sure peanuts are not necessarily good for geese. I don't know. That's I thought I was doing an okay thing, inside and it goose, wasn't but... salted, so I was trying really hard to. <laughs> but anyway, so Gwendolyn was like, she would come up and if I'd sat out on my steps and had a coffee in the morning, Gwendolyn would come up and be Aww. right like, and she would let me like she wouldn't let me do it a lot, but it, she would let okay. me do that. So Paul okay. is there, and one time he goes to feed her. And she opened her mouth, and he pulled back his hand. And they've got razor little mm-hmm, teeth. Mm-hmm. According to Paul, he almost had to get his thumb amputated. <laughs> it was a scratch, man. It's a slightly serrated beak is what they have. Yeah. They're not razor sharp, I wouldn't say. Well, according but to him. him oh, and wait, yeah. At some point, we will videotape him doing that. Because it's like telling that story. Because yeah. it's like, I'm watching her, and it's like, it's like a horse. It's like, dude, don't move your hand. Don't move your hand. And like flatten it. Well, no. Just, she, you know. Well, he put it like this. Okay. And, and she would take it from mine, and she was okay. she was actually quite gentle. Yeah. But I think he wasn't used to her coming. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, we will tape him because to him, it's the one of the biggest injuries he ever had in his life. <laughs> right. And it was not. Oh, but I also, love Paul, and and I love my husband. But honestly, when they get injured, boys are dramatic. Oh. Well, there's no cold like a man cold. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, God. As we know. And we're... I think I'm dying. One more. So when I was younger, well, first of all, my memories, and I loved my grandmother, but my memories of her was her, we would go to Riverdale Zoo, which was in downtown Toronto, and it was like a block from our house, right? Oh, okay. So it was, so, but I remember we'd go in and do stuff, and she's like, do you want a pet rabbit? And I was like, what? So she'd push us over the fence, and we'd go in, and then she'd put the rabbits in her coat pocket, and we would take them home. And then I think she might have, I don't know, I don't know how, I think we might have got, so I also had a duck that, that oh lived in goodness. our basement, and we would take him out to the yard in the good weather. And I think he started, because we started bringing him, they had him at the school, and maybe somebody found an injured duckling or something. But I'm talking, my school was in downtown Toronto, right? So there's this little duck, and then he used to come home, with me and his name was Snapper. He used to come home for 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 like holidays and weekends. And I think one time he came home for a summer and then he never went back because they probably were like, We're not taking him back, you stupid people. So he lived he lived and and honestly it, I, I think we ended up giving him to the zoo eventually because, you know, it became a problem because ducks poop. Oh boy do they ever. But 
But I also remember coming home one time, and I have no idea about this. Oh yeah, she was she was great. She oh yeah, and she we came home one time, and 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 our grandmother helped us because my grandmother lived two doors away. And is that your mom's mom or your dad's mom? And my cousins, who it was my mom's brother. my mom's brother lived up. They had a big house, okay. And he lived upstairs in in a in a big like it was a big apartment. I guess mm-hmm. his house broken mm-hmm. in two. And they had two kids that were cousins. And I remember coming home one time, and I don't know why we had bought hamsters, but we had. And we're coming in, and and, and of course, like our parents are like, "What are you guys doing?" It's like nothing. And I saw our grandmother look at us, and she's like, "Right." And so so then she drops a glass. We had like three hamsters in under our that we bought at the at the pet store, right? So we kept hamsters for six months before anybody actually realized, except our grandmother, because oh. she'd give us money to buy them food. Oh, that's funny. And I want Beverly come and check oh. on that. Beverly come in because because oh, it was I a long time her. ago, and if I misremember, but but tell me because I remember specifically carrying hamsters in a little paper bag upstairs, creeping upstairs <laughs> so we wouldn't get caught. Okay, I have a hamster story for you. Okay, that's so funny because I wrote okay, that, that down. Okay, that should scare us. Even before you said hamster, oh, that's funny. Nope, not going there. That's a dark place. <laughs> that's a dark alley. We're not going into. <laughs> Oh my God! You're not going to talk about bump stuff. No, are you? absolutely oh not. My God. No, but this is better because this is for all audiences. So we had we had a staff member once who I don't remember who it doesn't matter. Um, uh, we I mean we had hamsters as kids. You had hamsters because our kids had hamsters. Like great thing, right? So this staff member, you know, when you're living in a place where you can't have a dog or a cat, hamsters a good yep. option. So hamster, great. Only hers had babies, so she bought it pregnant. Oh. And didn't know, yep. right? As as you do. So she went back to the store and she's like, dude, you sold me a pregnant ha- Nope, don't care. Not our problem. Yep. And no returns. suddenly, suddenly you've got one hamster. Now you've got 20 hamsters. So. And also they'll eat their babies, right? Oh, they'll eat their babies. They have, they have, little known fact, the shortest gestation period of any mammal. Oh, really? Hamsters. I think it's like, it's either 14 days or 12 days oh or something God. like that. Oh, it's ridiculously short. I think the next one up is rats at 21 or something. But Holy anyway, doodle. super short and they can start reproducing super early. So if you keep a litter, look out, you're right. going to be exploding. And it's all going to be incestuous. So, so, oh yeah, that's the problem with this picture. The morality of it. <laughs> no, I mean, they're all, don't they come <laughs> oh, out weird? If they, if they're, I mean, if eventually, it's, if they're brothers but, and sisters. Well, we got numbers in our favor here. So I don't know. So anyway... So, so they're like, she and her boyfriend or whoever, they're like, what, what are we going to do with all these stupid hamsters? Like, we can't keep all these hamsters. And, and she, they went to the store. Can you, like, buy our hamsters? No, 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 no. <laughs> we got lots of hamsters. So they put the babies in their pockets, and they went back to the store, and they just walked up to the, like, to the, the little the, hamster thing, and I put them in, dropped them in, and walked out. And the next day, they went back to check and see what happened, and they're like, yep, Hamsters. They they just added to the number that a they sale put on in. hamsters. Sale on hamsters, and they had no problem. Yeah. So that's how they got rid of them. <laughs> I can see that though, right? Totally. Like, like that's a scary level oh, of yeah. reproductive. Oh yeah. Uh, like that's skill. Yeah. Nope. That's that's. They are meant to survive. Yeah. They are meant to survive, but not here and not in the wild. Right. Not in the wild here. Okay, now that we're talking about animals, and honestly, this all gives us happiness and joy. It does. And, and so I'm just going to move my head so you can see happiness and joy right there. Are they asleep? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, on their one. thing. I put I, the gate up over there oh. so she, so that they leave each other alone. Oh, they're he's sleeping. Asleep. He's okay, sleeping. There oh, he goes. Oh, he's yeah, he, yeah, yeah. But so I was, you know, <clears throat> probably doom scrolling this week. But when I came across a bit, baby, do you think? <laughs> but I came across this guy, and his um, his cockatiel was oh. depressed. Right, so he's having a sad. He he had a sad bird, right? So I then, love cockatiels. so then I I I I have always because of Jimmy Buffett ideas and parrot and you know parrots and and pirates and stuff. But but so this guy was depressed. So this guy started like putting on music to dance with it. And I will find a link and put it in the show notes. Oh, oh my god! So that now the parrot is like. Dancing, <laughs> and as soon as music comes on, the parrot starts, and the guy's got it. But he doesn't want to dance alone. <coughs> it will dance across the counter, but he wants the guy to dance with him. Aww. And so it shows all these. This guy, like probably over six months, doing all these different dances. And it's oh my god, it's the sweetest thing though, because you see, first it's like my parrot was, or my cocktail was depressed, and it's just kind of sitting there. And now that thing has decided it loves dancing, and it's a dancing fool, right? Which is really sweet, right? It, is it sweet. just needed, it needed purpose. 
Yeah, totally. Right? I, I love cock. We had cockatiels. We had budgies. Um, we never had bigger parrots. But I worked for a guy way back in the day in Ontario who was, he had actually worked for the, the Toronto Zoo. So he did a lot of exotic animal right. stuff. So he was the guy that they called in. For, so so we had we had hyacinth macaws come in. We had oh, wow. scarlet macaws. We had blue and golds. We had... We had snakes come in. We had all sorts. Wow. It was really, really fun. That's but cool. The cockatiels we had, one of them bonded with our daughter. I won't say which one because they bonded to an extent where our daughter was uncomfortable because there was <clears throat> there was some physical love going on there that she was like, um, um what's happening? Oh. I, I don't, I don't want to take him out of his cage because as soon as I do, he starts rubbing himself on me. Like it was, what an awful thing! It was for a so kid, weird, right? but he loved her. Yeah, he, he wanted he to. Was, he yeah, wanted to. He was be he with was, her. He was her mate. Yeah, all right. Oh, that, but right. But, but they're smart. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. Like I was, I've always been fascinated by parrots, and I really, really wanted one until I worked with them a little bit. And and there was a woman who lived out. She, I don't think she's here anymore, like in the in the valley anymore, yeah. but she was a parrot rescue lady. Oh wow. And and I Cuz they live a long time. Oh, right? they live they live 100 years. 82 yeah. they live like a human. And at the time that I was teaching vet assistant classes, I would take my uh, students out there on a field trip just to see, like right. just so you know what some of the stuff that's available out here in terms of rescue and um the number of birds that she had was overwhelming. and Because the, they live a long time and people either they, can't handle them or they die, right? Well, yeah, yeah. So they would, some of them were birds that had outlived their owners, which yep. is super sad. Many of, many of them had behavioral problems because they're not meant to live no. in a cage, for yeah. sure. They're not meant to live. But, but they also, they bond so closely and they're so smart yeah. that I heard story after story of people who said, yeah, I got married and I had to give up the bird because the bird wouldn't accept my spouse. Yeah. The bird attacked my spouse, wouldn't yeah. let me. I saw pe- I saw videos of parrots that would walk across the floor, crawl up under the blankets of the bed, into the bed, and snuggle up next to their yeah. person. A bird! Okay. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like The, the but, bond, that, but, but it's... It's not good for them. It's like, not good for no. them. Yeah. So anyway, and now I haven't traveled places where birds like that live wild, but you have. Yes. So like that would be something for me to see. Uh, yes. That, so oh, Australia. Did, yes. Yeah. But budgies, we yes. call them budgies, yeah. budgerigars. They live wild yeah. out there to see a flock. Because my yeah. husband loves budgies and he would kind of like to get. Oh yeah. Right. One, another one or two here. Yeah. Um, but to see them. And, and I said to him, like, I'm always up. If he says, let's get a pet, I'm like, you betcha, yeah. let's get one. But keeping a bird in a cage now, like, we would have to leave the cage open and train the dogs not to go for the bird. Right, well, you know? well, and that's just it, right? Like, that's the challenge of it, I think. And, mm-hmm. and it is, it's like, and when you see them in the wild, and I know for, for some times, right, you have to... There's a reason the birds are have to get a home. Like they've yeah. either been found in the wild yeah. and their mums, yeah. right? Like all this stuff. But it's like you do. And I'm trying to think of the birds that we would see <clears throat> in in South Africa and in and in Kenya. And it's like you see these wild, beautiful things. But mm. but there is a not. It's not a trade off, I guess. But but the other thing is, you know. They definitely have predators in the wild. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Where they don't like they get to live yeah. their full life, and yeah. and I get it. But they don't have all the things to run around and and do the things. But it's and I think I think certain things like zoos and animal rescues can be good to teach us. Mm-hmm. But I also mm-hmm. have a problem with it, especially yeah. if they're if they're if they're going out. Because if, if an animal's now born in captivity, there's no way it could survive because it's probably had three generations that yeah, have been in yeah, the zoo. They can't. Yeah. So I get that. What bothers me is when they go take them. Oh, right? yeah. And, and yeah. That's, that's a challenge. But, that's but you know, like I'm a little obsessed right now on Instagram with monkeys and I won't get one because I know. But oh my God, they're so like, I understand. And, and, and a couple of the monkeys on there, the people have very clearly said this was a baby monkey that got found, mm-hmm. right? Like it would have mm-hmm. died if I didn't mm-hmm. take it. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but then these little monkeys, like there's this one little monkey and I'll put a link to it and it's his best friend is a rabbit. And so whenever they put food out for the monkey, he goes and gets the rabbit and he sits up and feeds the rabbit the food out of his food that he likes. Like, like it's like when you see these crazy bonding things, it's like, it, you know, it kind of makes it hard to understand how we're so divided when like, mm-hmm. you know, monkeys are, mm-hmm. and I know, I know that, you know, 
it monkeys aren't predators mm -hmm. you know but but it's also like seems to be that you know all our dogs get along yeah. all these like how come the animal world can figure out who's prey and predator and and who could be okay like, like in in africa what the 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 baboons do and and the other monkeys is they go to the top of the trees right and they're the lookouts because they can get to the top of the trees and they squeal when a predator's mm. coming and that's not just for the other monkeys it's for everybody yeah right yeah and and so it's like how come how come they can do that and, and as humans, we've just decided competition is better or, or divisiveness. Like, like when you think, of, like, and you see that, like, I've seen all sorts of stuff on, there's two really funny parrots on Instagram right now. And apparently they're both rescues and they both swear. <laughs> and they set each other off, right? They're trying to make them do. not swear, but they don't. Like, and, and they end up in this, like, no, screw you, no. Right? And, and it's like, but, but it's like, somehow they've, <clears throat> like, they have figured out whatever the, the cycle is. And we're still faking our way through it. There's a there's a parrot in the Poisonwood Bible, just to bring it back to that, because everything, and his name is Methuselah. <laughs> everything and begins and ends with the Poisonwood. <laughs> Methuselah is a good name too, though, it's right? Because they live forever. Right. But he was, uh, and I don't remember from the book if they say how he came to be there, but he was uh, raised by the pastor or the minister who previously held the missionary post uh -huh. before the family of the story arrives so they kind of inherit this bird and he swears but this is a southern baptist family that comes <laughs> into this house and so when they hear this bird swearing the father is like obviously a sinner lived here before us we're now you know right. cleaning up his mess anyway but the parrot also learned to rat people out because he mimics things right anyway yeah but they're fascinating. Like you also see these things, especially on Instagram, because people like to show their birds. Mm -hmm. And there's this one woman that she didn't realize that because her parrot, they're in a city and the parrot was having a hard time and she would always be like, it's okay, it's okay, right? And she would talk to her parrot like that. And then one day she was crying and the parrot came over and was like, it's okay, it's oh. okay, right? And it's like, oh my God, right? Like the parrot could recognize sadness. There is, so there, there is a school of thought out there about parrots that say, it is not just mimicry. It is it is way beyond mimicry. Like they don't obviously they obviously don't have our brain, no. they, a human brain, but it's beyond mimicry what they do. But what it's got to be like the, and again I, w I wasn't in the room with these mm -hmm. people, but mm -hmm. she was like that's not how he talks to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She was like she was just like I didn't know what to do with that. He was recognizing behavior yes. and yeah. seeing the need yeah. for the language yeah. that went with that the behavior. That goes with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so fascinating. It is it is really fascinating. And I think but it it sort of it kind of goes back to that thing. That's all we need to do is recognize behavior. Right? Like it is and it's also okay and and the sort of, you know, going back to the way the world feels right now. Honestly, it's okay if you recognize behavior and it's not behavior for you, right? It is perfectly okay to go, not for me right now, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. I was thinking about, about all the things that, you know, going forward and what will happen and, and how we help stop the divisiveness mm -hmm. where you should, where, we, where we're reaching out, which it, honestly, it feels like compassionate people do that a lot more, especially with what's been going on this week when, when like all hell is broken loose on social yeah. media. But, but the other thing is, you don't have to be kind and compassionate to everybody. Sometimes they have to live with the, with the, with the results of their actions. It's the paradox of tolerance. Well, well there, and that we've had that conversation this week. Did I have it with you or did I have it with Paul? But I talked probably about both. that. Yeah, probably, but that's exactly right. We don't have to tolerate bullshit. And we're not going to anymore. No. And and it doesn't mean we need to be unkind to people who are maybe lost or confused. Mm -hmm. But man, somebody comes at me or somebody I care about or somebody I happen to see that needs it. I'm not tall. Like I am, I am yeah. not being the, <clears throat> oh, we can work this out. I'm coming out swinging. Yeah. Two sides to every argument. I know sometimes it's like, no, actually your side doesn't get mm -hmm. to have a, a say. Yeah. There's, so I'm going to talk about two books right now one of them is called i think i've mentioned this one before it's called this it's i think it's just called sparrow might be the sparrow and the author's name is mary doria russell and i love her this book i read it years ago on the recommendation of my sister connie jones yeah. who who told me to read it and she's a she's a great reader and she reads differently from me 
and and I know that I read it or I started reading it then, but I don't think I finished it then because I happened to pick it up for some reason a couple months ago. And I read it and I'm like, oh, I don't remember any of this. It's possible that I forgot the whole thing, but it's also more likely that I just didn't finish it. But but also it's got to land at the right time. It's got to land at the right time. And it landed at the right time. And it is a story of, of, a, of a Catholic, possibly Jesuit, I can't remember, uh, missionary. It's a, it's a, it's science fiction fantasy ish because the story is dealing in a dual timeline narrative where a Jesuit minister has been sent into the, it, to an alternate planet where they have found life. They've, they've found alien life forms that speak something that they think they can recognize. And so there's a team that goes, including this minister. The only one that comes back is the Jesuit minister, but because of time, because of travel through space, there's a time travel right. element because of speed of light and all that. Anyway, he comes back incredibly damaged, totally traumatized. Can't talk about what happened there. So the story of the book is what happened while he right. was there. But it's this I, the I, exploring the idea of faith and the intersection of difference and how do we accept beings that right. are different from us? Because the alien beings that they meet with are have many human qualities. Right. But there's not just one type of alien being on that planet. There's different right. alien beings. And, and how are they treating the other right. ones? And that's where the conflict comes in. And anyway, it's a great book, beautifully written. And Mary Doria Russell it has a great social media presence. She posts fantastic stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's something. We'll put links. We yeah. will definitely yeah, put links we will. for that. And the other one that, and I just finished it this week, it's called The Hour of the Witch by Chris Bojalian. And Chris Bojalian, I read his first, uh, I first read him years ago in a book called The Midwife for the Midwives, uh, which was really good. And I, I really liked it. This one is fascinating. It's set in the time of the Salem witch trials in Boston oh, in wow. whatever yeah. 1600s uh, that that was. And it's, it's not about that exactly, but it is spoken it's mostly narrated from the point of view of a young woman who is married to um a man who is uh, abusive and he the the catalyst of the story is he stabs her in the hand like he's been abusive to her in the past but he stabs her in the hand like impales her on the table with a fork and she leaves she's like i think he's gonna kill me so i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna petition for divorce that's a big deal in Puritan right. culture yep. in Boston at that time. Big deal. So they go through the trial, and and as the whole trial comes to pass, they there there are subtle accusations of witchcraft, which is the thing that they right. any woman who stood up, any woman who spoke out, any woman who right. deviated from the conformity of the day, yep. witchcraft was to blame, right? So that was always a concern. Um, so in order to prevent her from being hanged as a witch, the people that were for her, including her parents, deemed it better that she go back to her husband. So her divorce, uh, was denied right. and she was sent back with him and she, she didn't end up getting badly hurt. The story ends well. Um, but it, it, the, the stuff that it talks about resonated with me so much because it, it's addressing the idea of women who speak out, women who are different, women who dare to challenge the men in power. And there's a price to be paid. There's always been a price to be paid for that. And in this book, she she pays an enormous price for it. She triumphs in the end, um, so it's safe to read. I'm just gonna tell you. Um, but the but the journey is is brutal. It, it, honestly, I mean, I get it. We don't burn people at the stake anymore. It's not so different now. No, it's right? not like, so different now. Like if you think about the audacity of a black, yep, South Asian woman running for president, you know what I mean? Like it isn't that different now. And what ha and the fallback. And I promise you, I, I will I will not always talk about this. But the thing is, it hasn't changed that much. It's just the, they don't, they don't get to stone us to death or burn us yeah. at the stake, right? Like, it, it's like, it hasn't changed that Mostly. much. We're still, f well, but right, but that's just it. It's, it's, what will it take for it to be easy to see women and, and others as equals? Because honestly, 
a lot of us in the world already see that. So, so what is, and I understand it's power and control and money and, and all that kind of stuff. But what is it like, I'd rather be at a table and, 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 and have, have far smarter people than me there because that's how you learn than always having to be, not truly, the, 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 the guy. And usually, you know, no offense, but it's an old white guy. That huge it is, is the guy in control, right? Like huge, the, the, the burden on them for that must, must be enormous. I mean, one of the things that I loved about this book was that it, it addressed just, just sort of tangentially, yeah. um, because witches and midwives have often been, and it's no, right. it, I mean, this guy, Chris Bojelian, the author, his first book was, or the first one that I read was called Midwives, but the idea of reproduction, um, right. childbirth has been largely put to women yeah. it, traditionally I should say yeah. it has been the the um that's the area that's the arena of women the sisterhood uh midwives and witches and right. healers right. there's a thin yeah. line at that time yeah. of, of history between all that stuff and so so one of the things that was brought against the the main character in this book was that her uh, a person that she knew closely had lost a pregnancy, so they blamed it on her. Right. Oh, she must be a witch. So she killed the child in the womb of that woman. And obviously that's ridiculous. Yeah. But the idea of that power that women hold to reproduce, to right. bleed without dying, that, that actually came up right. slightly in the book as well. Yeah. The idea that we bleed, but we don't die. Right. We bear life. And go through tremendous pain, and but we do this thing that men cannot do. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and and can we blame women for when it doesn't work out? Like part of the problem of this character was that she didn't have children. She was in this abusive marriage, and she hadn't had. A, right. She was like twenty four, and she yeah. hadn't had a child yet. She's like, you're but barren. Right. You're a barren it's woman. Scandalous. Right? Scandalous. Yeah. You should have had children by now. Um, but, but, you know, that's really interesting to me because I think when we take it and, and, and we look at, you know, the, the, the abortion bans in the mm-hmm, U.S. Mm-hmm. and you look at exactly that is there is they, they, a certain, you know, unfortunately at this moment, large group of people don't want women to have power over their own mm-hmm, bodies. Mm-hmm. And, and so that goes, but that goes back, like, it just sort of connected for me. Look at how far back that goes. Right, so and far I, back. I know for many it does. Like for many of them, it comes from, which is freaking wrong. Because if you're going to do one thing in the Bible, you should do all of them, yep. which is a whole yep. bunch of like other things. But but it is really interesting to see that we haven't broken through there yet. Yeah, right. That yeah. we should have bodily autonomy. There's there's nothing in the Bible that talks about abortion. Did you know that? Yes, so somebody was writing about that. But also, it, it's one of those. And actually, I think like there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that says. If you do this at this time, then your your firstborn daughter should be killed, or your firstborn. So, like, oh my there's God. a whole bunch the of amount stuff, of, right? In the, in the Old Testament, it's it's all smiting and judgment. And I mean, if you live by the Old Testament Bible, you're going to have a rough life. That's and that's and that's except what they cherry doing. pick. Well, they cherry pick for sure. But Jesus came to the story dispel. is Jesus came. Yes, the story is Jesus came to dispel the Old Testament. No. Um, message of violence and and um, the idea that atonement has to happen, that there's yeah. always a sacrifice re- required for this. Right. The, the the death of Jesus was meant to be the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't have to right. live, live by like Old that. Testament right. law anymore. Right. It's now about love. It's now yeah. about acceptance. Right. And, and that's where a lot of religious people right now, the, the Christian nationalists, right. they, there's a gap. They want to live by Old Testament law. Yep. I'm going to find, I'm going to find, there's a West Wing, there's a West Wing episode, and I think I've talked to you about it, where the Martin Sheen, who who plays President Bartlett, um, he was a religious scholar, right? And he got elected. And so, and so there's a point where there is a, a very far right Christian nationalist, even back then in the West Wing. And at one point, you know, they've sort of been battling because, and, and I think it might be about abortion, but they're, um. And his at that at that stage in the thing, I think his daughter is dating a black guy, right? That actually works for him. But he walks in, and this woman, everybody else always stands up when the president walks in, right? This woman doesn't. He's like, get up, 
right? He's like, I don't care if you don't respect me, you respect the office of the president, basically, mm-hmm. is kind of it. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, and then she says something smart alecky, which is like, honestly, if you're in the presence of the president, but, but he, and she says something, okay, so let's talk about this. So tell me, which of your three children are you going to kill because you've dyed your hair? <gasps> or whatever, whatever oh, like yeah, whatever yeah, it yeah. was, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and it was, and he went on like that. And so, of course, she's completely taken aback. But I'll find it because it is, it is the best takedown of the hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah. Right, that I've ever seen. And, 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 and it's one of those things where it's like, it's like, I think religion brings lots to many people. Mm-hmm. But it's not really bringing you what you think it is if you have to hate others. That's it. Yeah. Right? Like, that's yeah. the challenge of yeah. it. And I think, I, I'm not against, it's not for me, organized religion. I find, I fi- honestly, I find my God when you and I sit and laugh. Mm-hmm. I find when mm-hmm. I walk with my dogs. I find mm-hmm. it when Scruffy's sitting over me in the morning staring at me. Right? But, and, and others find it from, from organized stuff. But my religion doesn't tell you how you should live. Tells you me. know what? Everyone is free to practice the religion that they want. Or they should be. They, they should be. But their religious um, strictures are for them. Yeah. It's not for someone else. That's them. You chose to believe this. You chose to follow this this life, yep. whatever it is. That's fine. You do it then. If you're against Fill abortion, your boots, man. Don't, don't have, have one. one. If but you're against interracial marriage, else, then don't, don't marry don't somebody, marry somebody, somebody not your race. Yeah, or you're against gay marriage, don't, don't be gay. Be gay. <laughs> like, and if you are gay, maybe you're not in the right place. But you don't get to tell others that. No, and that's the. So I just, I just recently reposted something that's pretty much said that it's like your religion tells you how to live your life. It doesn't tell me know the difference. Exactly. Right, and that's yeah. just it. If if whatever you believe, as long as it doesn't hurt others. Yeah. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like as long as it's not like the whole Taliban women have to do this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. That's a whole lot. That's a whole yeah. different level, although it doesn't seem like a different level at this moment. But but do your thing, man. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. What, you know, it's kind of like you have the absolute right to swing your arms. Your right stops when it hits my face. That's right. Right. Do you remember that episode? Do you watch Simpsons? I'm just going to do this. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> If you happen to walk into my way, well, that's your problem. Yeah. That's, you know. Yep. How long are we? Oh, we're at 53. Look, we're doing pretty Look good today. Us. We're doing Look pretty us. good. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have something else that I found online because, you know, sometimes doom scrolling gives you hope. All right. Not in my world, but you go. I find, well, you know, I think it's the algorithms because I don't get a lot. Like I get a lot of people going, here's how to handle the things, you know. I get a lot of sourdough recipes. Works for me. Sometimes for me, just saying. <laughs> Sometimes, actually, yes. But, okay, so this is this is somebody called Serial Ephemera. Eph- oh, my God. I, I don't have any words today. Serial Ephemera. Thank you. Um, thematically speaking, the most important thing, Terry Pratchett, who, mm. who you know taught me, was the concept of militant decency. The idea that you can look at the world and its flaws and its injustices and its cruelties and get deeply, intensely angry, and that you can turn that into energy for doing the right thing and making the world a better place. He taught me that the anger itself is not the part I should be fighting. Nobody in my life ever said that before. And I think, don't fight the anger, Wait. turn it into something. The anger itself, itself is, is not it, the part I should be fighting. Right, so don't, let the anger come in, turn it into something, though. Oh, I love that. Right? Do you want to say who Terry Pratchett is? Okay, so I, I'm, I'm not a Terry Pratchett expert by any means. I only discovered him the year that he died, which I think was a couple years ago, sadly, because he's hilarious, he's... He's brilliant. He's written a whole bunch of books. One of his series that he wrote is called something about, what's that called? A dome, a sphere? No, I'm missing it. We'll find it. We'll find it. But anyway, he's got a whole series about the world as he sees it. And it's really funny and ridiculous, but also brilliant. And he and uh, Neil Gaiman wrote the book that became, it's a TV series. Firefly? No, not Firefly. No! <laughs> I've never oh saw God. Firefly. I'm thinking of somebody else. Yeah, it's David Tennant plays the demon, and I can't remember the name oh, of the guy I'll who plays the angel. I'll have to look anyway, it up. it's 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 great. Um, but yeah, so Terry Pratchett, one of the first books that I read by him, I I I picked it up for I don't know why, and 
and that it was describing a young man who he he described as being made of elbows and i thought that that image was so funny it was just and so he's very funny he writes yeah. ridiculous off the cuff uh, right. well, absolutely good. yeah anyway, yeah. anyway made of elbows is scruffy he is made but of yes. elbows. Anyway, it's so ridiculous stuff. It's but, ridiculous, but, but deep, but in, and philosophical. In that within that construction, he writes truth. He writes truth about human behavior and human relationships and and conflict and how we get along with each other and and it's funny. And and it, but but it kind of goes back to, I mean. We leaned in, a, a, you know, a little deep into the animal and the the the, the joy that they bring us today, mm. and I think we needed that. But that's exactly it. Needs to be funny. Are Wait, you looking for is your he dog? Still sleeping or is he gone? No, he's there. Oh, he's, he's dissolved. Just, yes, he's, he's turned dissolved. into yep, like he's uh, taffy. But I think we need to take all of these things. We need to look at what Brene Brown said, mm-hmm. right? And and we need to to do what did what did she call them, Rooks? The the minuscule, the little tiny things of hope or something. I think, right? Get that. Look for the little things you can do in your community. Take your anger and turn it into mm-hmm. turn it mm-hmm. into right, moving to the right thing. Like it, there's no point in talking to the trolls. There's no point no. in in in, no. in you know contesting the election. There's no point in any of that. No. But let's take this and move it forward because the fact is we have this huge opportunity. And that's what comes out of crisis is opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We have this huge opportunity to turn things around. And when in, in, in 2026, when there will be the House and the Senate, take back the power because that's what holds the power. President can do a lot, but he can't do it without the House and the Senate. And, and so let's talk about how we do that and how we make the world a better place one action at a time locally because that's what bubbles up. Right? So how are we going to do that? locally right here in our tiny little community that's that's we'll just have we'll report back because we need to have a conversation about that yeah i mean i think we're going to do it like i was i've already been thinking how do i move myself and it goes back to the my year with eleanor out of my comfort zone Mm -hmm. to do these Mm -hmm. things right and and i think i think we have to look but we will report back i mean one of the things paul and i talked about that we're going to do with aha and and roxanne does some some work with us is we're going to reinstate random acts of kindness (gasps) so what we do is we each each month they team member gets and it might have to be 100 now because 50 doesn't go far but you get 100 bucks to do a random act and, and it was 50 so i have to talk to paul because he's the banker how many team right. members do you have i like the odds yes. on this <laughs> we have five counting us but we'll just we'll just I like right? the and odds you on get this. to and you get to randomly go out <laughs> and do something yeah 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 okay what are you doing we'll talk about that. i don't know but you like you can't do this and then and then give it to me or assign me that or Why? something i don't know everybody gets one okay. like everybody well every month everybody gets one it's pretty cool right like every month somebody gets one that's a better way to say it can right? i have a hundred dollar gift certificate and then like buy you guys dinner no Oh, it has dang. to be a random act of kindness oh, to a stranger. Okay. It might be. To a stranger. It might be. Yeah. Oh. It can, it's a, or, or it could be somebody you know, but somebody okay. who could who needs the pickup or somewhere. Like what I used to do when it was my turn was I would go in the grocery store and if I saw a senior and they didn't have much, I would go pay for their groceries. Yeah. And yeah. I would usually do it quietly. Yeah. Right, like I'd be, I'd be go up and go, hey, can I do this? And here's my card. And then they tell the person, and the person's looking around, right? Yeah, like stuff yeah. like that. And I think little tiny that's, things, that's right? Bro- I love that. That's brilliant. And we'll report back What's, on that. what did you do this week that scared oh, you? Oh, that scared me this week. Oh, Everything scared, scared me, me this week. Just saying. This week was this week was bad as far as I don't know that I pushed myself out of my comfort zone at all this week. I don't know. I got out of bed on Wednesday morning. That was way out of Good my comfort zone. Good for you. So. Yeah. Good for you. That was. Like like you being a journalist, former journalist, and being so tied in as you are with all this stuff, this hits you way harder than it hits me. I know more because of you than I ever have in my life. And I love that. But I see how it hits you. So that's... So it doesn't hit me the same way. I have the ability because I have this sliver of ice in my soul that I have... That I have uh, nurtured so carefully over these last... How many decades? Um, three. Three and, decades. and a half. <laughs> three. Yes, that's right. That's right. Sliver of ice. Um, yeah. But so like those things, they it hit you harder than me for sure. Um, I had so much hope for a Kamala Harris presidency. Yeah. It looked... 
It looked like honestly it did, and 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 the it thing looked, is, yeah. she would have. But but you know what? She I, would have I, done amazing things. I think Hillary Clinton would have been good. Yeah. She didn't warm my heart. No, Kamala Harris. Yeah, and and Tim Waltz yeah. are like good humans, boy. Yeah, like it break. She would have done such a yeah. good thing, and the timing was not right. Well, but you know what? It, you're right. But when will the timing be right? Because because yeah. so so black men and black women showed up, mm-hmm. right? I think I forget what it is. Something like twelve million Democrats stayed home. White women let us down. But also, young people. And young voted, people. It looks like people but, yeah, voted, voted for more Trump. for him. Yeah. And and and. But yeah, you know what? Somebody I don't and I, I that. and this is just just one little thing because. But it was like there was a, a pundit on MSNBC where I'm I am very carefully monitoring who I watch on okay, there. That's but good. Um, and I only like I don't I don't let myself watch for more than an hour. I just want to know what's going on because yeah. there yeah. could be there could be things. But one of the pundits said, which was really good today, was he was like, let's think about this. You know, there's Joe Rogan, there was InfoWars, there's Fox News, right? There are all these things, and then Elon Musk comes in with X, right? And stuff like that. And it's like, and they're all putting out this false information, but it's being consumed, and there is mm-hmm. no way to fact check them, mm-hmm. which which something has to change. Yeah. But what he said is, that's a radical a radicalization funnel. Yeah. Yeah. And and so it's no, honestly, it's no different than the freaking Taliban and nope. how they radicalize people. Yep. So they created this. And the Democrats can't fight because, because true, they're not playing by the same rules. No, but they're not. And, and and journalists, like even on MSNBC that leans left, I mean, they will still criticize what they see wrong in the mm-hmm. Democrats, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody criticizes the GOP from those no. ones, right? Like, and the thing is, that's exactly right. Like, yeah. we are di- that's that is a radicalization, and it's got to be looked at. Like, we have to figure out a way to to police that in in a way that doesn't take away people's rights and freedoms but my god so that's where politics intersects technology because it's it's almost like technology has has given us tools that we don't know how to manage yet well what and and they've said that and they're saying that ai is going to make like the 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 people that have that created help create ai Mm -hmm. are worried it's a threat to humanity Mm -hmm. right and and so when we look at all of this but honestly how does fox news have a license yeah. Right. They they yeah. don't tell the truth. And granted, but and then they got sued for a whole like almost a billion dollars. Well, even quarters. Trump doesn't like them. Right. right, right. And and they and don't he... like him. <laughs> right. Oh, but yeah. it's like, but what it is. Mess. It's all of this, and it's about money. But but it does go back to what we talked about. Like, is that let's take these little, create little bits of joy. Create mm-hmm. little take little mm-hmm. moments of hope. Mm-hmm. Look out for each other because right now that we need to regroup and come back. Yeah. And as we move forward, we have to take care of each other because if we don't, that lets them win. Yeah. And we won't let yeah. them win. Right? Yeah. So let's go to Gratefuls. Hmm. Oh, I got a shipment from Vibe today. Oh, <gasps> what did you get? I'm very grateful. Do you get what you have on? Nope. I got this uh, <clears throat> earlier, <Before. laughs> earlier this month. <laughs> earlier last month. Last month. I don't do an order every month. And... Didn't she just uh, say last month and this I month? I did, okay. but not okay, every Okay, what did you month. get? I got two sweatshirts because right now I can't wear any nice knitted sweaters because baby you teeth. You have a dog, yes. So I got to wait till those are gone. Soon, almost gone. So I got two more sweatshirts that are nice because they do really they nice do, sweatshirts. Yeah, I really yeah. like them. And a pair of jeans that I'm not entirely sure. I'm keeping them, but I'm not entirely sure about them. So I'll wear them and then let you be the judge. Okay. And you'll be like... Well, you can't take them back now because you'll wear them. Also, they probably look great because you're just. But you have but to wear they, them. Yeah, they've got a. They're a longer, like a. They're a boot cut with a uh, frayed edge, like a natural. Like uh, the ones I have. Not that frayed. Okay. Yeah, they're not those a little ones. frayed. Yeah, but they're long. Like even yep. and I'm five seven. I have to wear four inch heels or maybe cut them but it's a raw edge so i could cut them right so i might well we'll take a look after we get off the podcast because if you're not actually going to wear them you should send them back oh i'll wear them because they're comfortable okay so they're good but i think i'll have to cut i think i'll have to cut that's fine that's the thing but the two sweatshirts are great so okay so so that's a good grateful grateful. i'm grateful grateful. for vibe vibe i love you yeah i love watching the videos yeah she's great she and everything looks good on her Everything yeah. looks good on her. No, it's, it's a pretty awesome place. We'll put that link in too. Yeah. Right. So I'm grateful for the people I've talked to this week who who care so much because 
because there are lots of people that honestly could be like, well, I'll get through this. And that's not what they're saying. What they're mm. saying is I need to find a way to step up and lean in. So you're grateful for what? I'm grateful for the people that, that are, and, and like all of you that are going to look for those little glimmers of hope, that they are going to find the joy, that are going to step up and check in on people. And because there are people out there and that's what, that's what for, the, for the most part, it was like, what the, f- right, happened. And then it was like, we need to take care of people. And that was in my world, that was pretty much the reaction is like, this is awful and I'm devastated. And, and, and most people I know took Wednesday to, and now they're like, yeah. here's what I'm going to do. And here's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to check on these people and I'm going to make myself available. And, and that's what we have to do now is take care of each other. You know, I feel a bit naive because, because I really thought she had a chance. Like I really, that, that was my thought on Wednesday when I got up Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I didn't know how bad things were. I really didn't know how bad things were. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I, but, but, you know, so I have heard stories and there's some that have come up from when it was 2016, but there have been a couple of stories where there's a, there's a, a parts, either a manufacturer or like the people that put the parts together, right? Okay. But they get them from, from China or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And so, the day after the election, they had a meeting with their entire team, many of whom voted for Trump, right? Because it's in a very red state. And they had a meeting with them and said, so here's the deal. Because Trump's going to put in tariffs, we have to order a year of supplies in advance. Otherwise, we will go. It's a small, you know, not a huge business. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll go out of business. And what that means, it will take all our cash. There's no Christmas bonuses. <sighs> they did it to themselves. Yeah. There are also families, apparently, and I, I saw... I saw on on a a group, it's like um, somebody that that works in a a, um, company that has a a lot of um, Latinos that are mostly here there legally, Mm -hmm. but they have family members who aren't and they were and they were shocked because all they heard was the economy. They needed cheaper eggs and cheaper things. And they were shocked that about the big deportation thing, they didn't get all the information. Oh, my goodness. So there's a lot of there's a there's a meme going around and it's about well, the leopard's coming to eat your face. And it's kind of like, there's a leopard in the room. You don't think it's going to come for you, right? Like, why are you letting the leopard in the room, right? Yeah, and, and so yeah. that's what everybody's saying. It's like, well, leopard's coming for your face next, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and unfortunately, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, right? it's too late. And, and so there are all these people. And, and my heart really does go out to them because for many of them, they are low-information voters mm-hmm, or, you know, mm-hmm. they are... They are people that got fed a line. They, they probably watch Fox News, and, and so they are in this information bubble. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's going to come home, and it's really going to hurt them. Yeah. So that's cheery. <laughs> I'm still happy about my, my sweatshirts. That's good. And, and honestly, I and am you're, happy because people do care, right? And you're looking at people right? with, who are glimmers. Like, okay, so, yeah. so we've ta- we've, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast, but, but everybody knows what a trigger is, right? You hear a trigger, yeah. something, and it's like, mm, all my yeah. past trauma comes yes. like, <sighs> yeah. um, a glimmer is the opposite of that, right? A glimmer is where it's like, oh, I just heard something that gives me hope. So let's or, or something that joy, but that's exactly. And I do that. I, I share a lot of art on my personal you Facebook do. page, You're right? Really which good I at love. That. Yeah. And and but I also like for you. I send her ridiculous things. Oh my god! I think <laughs> she sends me so many food. I get because I get up early. Also, also, little kids with Scottish accents who swear. Oh my goodness! Oh they're my so god! Hilarious. They're so funny. They're so hilarious. It's a fucking goat, mum. And then mum's <laughs> like, it's a what? <laughs> fucking goat that was was awesome (laughs) right and this little kid and i guess she just heard it and it's like or the little kid that wants to go to the pub oh yeah (laughs) oh my god what you know to the fucking pub mom (laughs) and and the mom is like what what and and it's like it's my day off (laughs) (laughs) you're seven all your days are days off (laughs) we will i will have to find a couple and share those on the page because they're okay that's a for me that's a glimmer or those scary things where people just yell. And, Friggin, and they, so she made me, so we had, oh yeah, so when we were mm, having our little party. Election. Election party. She brought Some out party. her stupid spider box 
And she's I like, just wanted, oh, watch this. I wanted because we had people on Zoom too, and I wanted I wanted them to Here see box, it work. Get me my vanilla out of the box again because it's so cool when <laughs> you do that. I should have brought it over. Oh yeah, it's so and, funny. And, and it doesn't matter. I know it's I know it's in there, but you don't like it. No, but you don't know what it. I want to do, and and if I did it to Paul, I'm honestly making my heart attack. But they have these masks you can put on, and then you're just laying in bed beside <gasps> mm-hmm. somebody. Mm-hmm. There's another one. Do where, it where you just scream. If I was in the kitchen and oh I go, ah, everybody runs. Oh, so my okay, so I have a, I have a tendency to be a little jumpy, mm, jumpy, hyper reactive, hyper vigilant, whatever you want to call it. There's probably a diagnosis for it. In the car, and I've gotten way better in the car because you can drive. I can, I can drive with you. I can drive. My, anyway. Although, just for the record, she's always like, I'll drive. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do offer. Don't it, I? It doesn't bother me. But, but I'm like. Red light, red light, red light ahead. Do not see it. Why do you not see the red? Okay, and I'm I'm pumping the imaginary brakes, and and I've done that many times to my husband. Drives him freaking up the wall, mm-hmm. and I'm like, be a better driver, <laughs> be a better driver, and I'll stop or let me drive. Me. No, he's got motion sickness, so he has to drive. Convenient. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, because that's a glimmer. <laughs> <laughs> We're going down this dark hole. <laughs> we started with a dark hole and we're ending with a dark hole. You know? Okay. Still safe for work. Yep. Well, maybe. Ish. I said fuck a lot. Some some podcasts. Sometimes you a lot just of gotta say what the fuck. I Sometimes say. you just gotta. Okay. So, so we talked about our gratefuls. I'm yep. grateful for clothes. You're grateful for glimmers. Yes. You are much deeper than me. I am shallow. That's okay. Shallow is okay this week. Shallow man. is fine. Shallow is a good thing. I'm okay. also grateful that we're moving on to wine probably after yes. this, and we're going to have something. If my bread, something. I don't know if my bread. We're having fine. focaccia and we're having crab dip, and I got a whole bunch of cheeses. Cheeses is good. I sent my husband to Costco because we have no cheese. How is that possible? How is it possible? I don't have cheese in my house. I don't know where he went because he'd been gone for a long time. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. So what do I we think want? We're more done for that. We want more happy hours, Ruthie. What do we want less of? Well, I would like more democracy, but I also want less bullshit. Less bullshit would be great. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, you guys. Have a good weekend. We're here when you need us. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.